Uh, where shall we start? What do you know with... Oh, okay, so, tell us your name. Okay. Tell us your name and uh, your, your, your device. Okay, well my name is uh, Jan Deroje. I'm from the Netherlands and I've made the Casio Pay. Casio Pay stands for Cassette I.O. Peripheral Expansion Interface. Oh, very good. So it's not just the name. Okay. And, um, well, Cassette because it connects to the cassette board. It connects to the cassette port of the C64, of a Commodore 16, Commodore Plus 4, a PET computer, the C128, the VIC-20. Well, basically all models, all 8-bit models Commodore has produced. And you plug it in, you switch it on. Then you uh, well type load or when you're lazy you type shift run stop. You are asked to press play. You you can press the menu button or you can press the A menu button. Okay, play so button. If I'm looking over there, I'm, zo I'm zooming in. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. What are those? Are those three buttons? There are three buttons. There's a reset button. Okay, yes. There's a menu button, okay. and there's a play record button. Oh, okay. And well, when you're asked to press play, you can press the menu button. Then it loads the menu program. If you press play, then it will load the program you have selected in the menu the last time. Okay. So if you're playing Pac-Man all the time, you don't need to go into the menu. You can press play. Okay, very good. Yes. So we press the menu button, so the menu will be loaded. It will load a fast loader. When the fast loader becomes active, it loads fasty ti uh, 50 times the speed of the conventional tape. Uh, the menu program is um, pretty large, it's um, 55 kilobytes, so it uh, takes a few seconds to load. The reason why it is so large is because this version of the menu program includes a wedge, and the wedge is located in high memory, and the menu itself is located in low memory, so it results in a large program. For people who only play games and do not want to program, there's also a version without a wedge and it loads much faster because it's much smaller. Well, here we have a menu and you have um, well uh, multiple modes in how to use it. You have the um, program loading mode, slow from flash. Inside the Casio Pay is 8 megabytes of flash memory. Okay, so it, it, it is, there is permanent memory there, it is not replaceable memory, there's no SD card in No it. SD cards. Okay. Um, so you um, do not have to worry about file systems or cards that are not supported, it's right. just built in okay. and it can't fall out. <laughs> okay, very good. Well, you can go for the slow mode. Well, it's just for compatibility if, in case you have a program that doesn't run for some reason. You can go back to that. Um, it's also for development. If I want to develop for a, a Commodore model that isn't supported yet, there is no fast loader because I still need to write it, then I can go use this mode. But Fast from flash, does it go really fast? Fast from flash, yes, it goes uh, 50 times the normal um, tape um, loading. So um, <clears throat> it's pretty fast, it's uh, 2850 bytes per second. And if we select, uh, well, uh, one of these uh, games, um, uh, this is one of my favorite games, it's called um, Bomberman. <laughs> okay, yes. And uh, well, I select it, I um, press uh, exit or return. It saves this setting and it automatically loads the program. Well, now it goes. And within a few seconds, the game will start. The reason why, uh, the, oh, well, the game is done loading, it's now decompressing. It's, it's basically. And the, the light over there shows activity? Activity on a cassette level. Well, on the cassette level, okay. Yep. And the reason why the screen is black and white is because I have a problem with my monitor. I tried to switch it, but for some reason it's still black and white. So I'm beginning to doubt, to doubt the cables. Uh, well, uh, here we have the game Bomberman. If we go for a game that's much smaller... Okay. 
Now loading the menu program again. Uh, well, it's funny. When do you start developing this device? Uh, about two years ago. Oh, two years ago. About two years ago. I thought it would be nice if I could connect some motors or relays or lights or all sorts of things to my Commodore 64. Well, there was only one port um, that's not really used that much <laughs> around the people that I know, and that's the cassette port. Because the other port you can use for the printer or the cartridge or the disk drive, but the cassette port is always, well, mostly unconnected. So that would like, to me, would be uh, like a, 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 a very nice port to use. And also because uh, the connector itself is pretty small and therefore less expensive. So I started to build um, uh, a speech synthesizer and I could, um, well, um, 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 control it for my C64. And then I thought, well, I have to load the program from a disk or via a cable. Couldn't I load it? via the cassette port. So I wrote an interface, I wrote a speed, uh, a speed loader, I wrote the menu program, and well, two years later, it's all this. So this is, a, this is complete, yes? B1.1 is complete? Um, or are you, are you planning another improved version? Um, no, I'm not planning uh, an improved version. Um, I'm um, planning to support as much as commoner models as possible. Okay. And um, I um, can borrow machines that I do not own, so I can develop software for the, uh, for instance, uh, the PET 2001 with the chiclet keyboard. I, I don't own one, but the um, well, the Commodore Club has uh, offered me one, so I borrowed it for two months, and our, now the Casio Pay supports that model as well. Unfortunately, <laughs> the PET 2001 has basic version 1, and basic version 1 has a few bugs that makes the use of the Casio Pay a bit more, well, a, a bit less user-friendly. So, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I, I, I also wrote a manual. How about to? Uh, to it's a, a more than a hundred pages, and for every model, there's a description how to use it. And there's also uh, the. Um, um, so there are bugs in the basic version 1 from, from Commodore and they made a basic version 2 and there the, the problems well don't exist anymore and the Casio Pay acts like it was intended to. Uh, the problem you can expect on the PET 2001 is uh, you load the program and when you run it it shows an error message and if you type list you see the program it looks exactly like it has to be and then you start um, the, the program by typing run, what you did the first time but caused the error, then miraculously it works. That's weird. <laughs> That's very weird. <laughs> it's very weird. <laughs> but then again, um, those problems don't exist on all the other computer models. It's specifically a thing for basic one. And um, for all people who are developing for the Commodore Pet series, <laughs> this is the best book you can read. <laughs> Um, you can also, because when you when you're connected to the cassette port, well, you might wonder, can you play TED files? Because that's an obvious thing you might wonder if you have a device connected to the cassette port. So you can go to the tab mode. And you can load uh, tab files, for instance. Um, oh, well, you can uh, you can can select the uh, mode of operation, and if we press uh, F1, we go to the uh, well, we go to the tab file mode, and you uh, well you, you load slow from flash because you can't use a fast loader because imagine a game where an image is shown and the music is played then you can't go to make it any faster just by improving the hardware. So if we um, well, choose this game and we press enter, then it saves those settings. And the next time if we type load and press play, 
it goes into the tap mode and it plays that program. And well, tap files may take a few seconds, so we just have to wait. Uh, you can, you can. Uh, in, from basic, you can type save, and then you press the play rec button, and that detects if you are trying to save or you're trying to load. And uh, well, then it, it saves like a regular tape on a regular slow speed because you could type save before the fast loader is even being loaded or the device doesn't know that. So um, it saves on slow speed. Well here you see the tab file being loaded. Uh, this is a game where you can well play a game during loading. So it, it, it's, it's just like well playing a tab file. But this goes on for minutes and minutes. And Now, it's the case that if you are playing a tap file, sometimes you need to, well, um, play forward, rewind, uh, just to uh, load different levels in a game. The Casio Pay can be configured via USB. So if we connect a USB cable, and if we start the Casio Pay application, the, the Casio Pay Manager, because you you need to configure the files that are stored on the Casio Pay. Okay, and this only works for the PC, for the this, for Windows. This works uh, only on Windows. Just on for Windows. Yeah. Windows. And what version of Windows? This is on Windows XP, okay, and it's good. also tested on Windows 7 and Windows 8. Very good. Um, well, here you see uh, the, all the files that are installed. There is a system file, it's for speech synthesis. There's a vocabulary, which is also for speech synthesis. And there's the menu program, the program that is loaded when we press on the menu button. And there are all the, well, here are all the games. And when we scroll down, we see, we see all the other games as well. Oh. And here we see the file that is currently selected. Well, it's for 13.92. And there's a settings file. It's a small file that keeps track of, well, what the file we have selected and what computer model we're using. Because um, you can use the Casio Pay on different types of computers. You can connect it to a Commodore 64, PAL or NTSC, a FIC20, a PLUS4, a C16, all those different models. C128, well, that's a bit under development because the C 128 only works in C64 moment, um, oh, mode okay. at this moment, so okay. I'm still working on that one. Okay, very good. Uh, well, the uh, 2000 series, the 3000 series, uh, 4000 series, and the 8000 series. And, well, in our case, we are connected to a Commodore 64, which would be uh, the one that's currently selected. The Casio Pay knows which file to load based on an index and not the file name <laughs> and that index is shown here as a user you don't know that indexes are used and not file names and where is the index right now oh uh, well the index of the currently selected file that is uh, number two, oh, uh, two. Okay. and uh, the mode is a uh, tab tab file so okay. it's the yes. second second tab file stored on the flash file system well, this is something uh, normal users won't have to worry about because you can go here and you can, well, uh, select the file, right mouse button, use this file, and then, well, that file is selected. Oh, right. okay, I see it. So, this is an, altern uh, an alternative for using the manual on the old computer. And from here, this is the manager, you can take other files or other PRGs yes. and transfer them from the laptop into the, into the Casio Pay. Yes. You can, um, well, you can press add file and then you can select the file which you would like to add. 
because uh, for instance uh, well this, this is a program I wrote for uh, well, something mechanical it adds it and then the entire uh, directory is being refreshed and the file is added but if you would um, well, let's go to the tab file mm -hmm. again again press play on tape well we press play on tape and now the tab file is being loaded again but if you are a real tape user you would like to have more control over the tape so oh, there's, a, there's a there's a virtual <laughs> virtual <laughs> tape drive is that and a tape drive for a plus four <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> yes you can use it on other models um, well, we want to see what uh, the current tape position is, and oh, okay. well, if we press status, it continuously communicates its status oh, over you. USB. So we now know exactly where we are within the file, wow. and we know our position. Yes. It's not based on time, it's based on bytes. Oh. It's a more absolute yes, um, positioning. So if there is a problem within a file, for instance, it stops on 50,000, 50, then you can go to the file to byte 50,000 and see what's wrong on that location. Well, that's very handy. Yes, it is. Well, if for some reason you need to, um, well, stop, you can stop, you can um, rewind, then you see uh, the screen rewinding. Oh, oh, yes, it is. The screen is so dark, I, I can't quite see. See it rewinding. No, it's uh, too dark. It, it also makes rewinding noises. <laughs> but you can't hear it here because the speakers are too small and surrounding sounds are too hard. But um, for the well, for the die-hard fans, you can also press on the buttons here. It also works. So that's very cute. And for the lazy people, you can also take the ruler and go through. A scroll bar. Go directly to the desired location in the right. tape. So this gives you more control if you are playing a tap file and you need to rewind. Because with only three, three buttons, you cannot navigate through a tap file and play your game. Well, for developers, there's a different mode. And that different mode is called the virtual file mode. If well, we go into the menu again. Um, sorry. Into the menu again. Loading the menu. Okay, well, we're waiting for it to load. So, uh, when did you first start selling your devices? Uh, October 2013. Yep. Um, and we go with Jan. Oh, uh, it's at the nearest to me. You can't even fast out, I'm going to make a phone. <laughs> yeah, it's... 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 So you can go to the virtual file mode, you can select it here, you can press um, enter there, and but you can also go to the uh, settings menu and, well, select the virtual file mode here. Fast loader, high speed, USB, virtual file. Up. Apply settings. And now we can select a file. For instance, uh, 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 software. Um, uh, oh. This one. So, uh, software C64. We take a program file and we take this file. It's very small, so it saves us the bother of waiting. 
And when, when you're talking about PRGs, you're talking about just the programs that would move through the cassette port ordinarily. So it would not be like PRGs that you would use on a disk drive. And PRGs you would use on a disk drive? Oh, you could do that too. Yeah. You just take longer. <laughs> because supposedly, you know, the programs on a the disk are bigger than programs on a tape. Um, well, um, yeah, well, it's not, it doesn't need to be, doesn't need to be. But um, PRG files, the, the, tra the traditional PRG files, and um, well, the Casio Pay is loading 50 times faster than traditional tape, and that's actually faster than a serial disk drive on a C64. So, um, if we type load, and we're now in the virtual file mode, which you can configure via, via the menu over here or via the settings over there. Now we need to press play on tape. So I'm not pressing this button. I'm pressing this button, transfer virtual program file. And well, now it starts to transfer. First it will do the fast loader. And then it will load the file. And it didn't load it from flash, it loaded it from the hard disk over here. So that's um, very convenient if you are a programmer, because if you're programming something, it's never right the first time. So um, otherwise you would need to upload it to flash, load it, then erase it again, reprogram. So now you can skip some steps and test it. Last week I released a new version of the Casio Pay Manager oh. <laughs> that allows you to well, select um, multiple files. So with one push in the, of the button I could delete the files, <laughs> which I don't. And um, there's also a virtual file mode for tab files, unfortunately. So you don't need to copy the tab file to you, to your, um, because tab files can be pretty large. But um, it requires a very um, fast computer. <laughs> it's falling apart. Okay. <laughs> because um, well, um, my um, my desktop computer is fast enough to support the virtual tab file function, but my laptop computer, it's pretty old and it's not fast enough, so once in a while it will drop a frame and well, if you drop a frame during the loading of the tab file, the tab file misses a byte and then the file isn't loaded correctly anymore and it stops. But if that happens, the Casio Pay Manager um, uh, detects that and it informs you that, well, you need a better computer. <laughs> no, no. It would. It, 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 it would be nice. It would be nice. It would also be nice if you had a little screw you can turn on, but doesn't do anything. <laughs> so, um, we have the file manager. We have virtual file control. We have a uh, tab file control. We have the flash monitor. So in the flash monitor, we can see what's stored on the uh, flash memory uh, on the uh, yep. so we can examine what's stored in the flash memory of the Casio Pay that for normal users mm, that's not necessary but well for a developer like me it can be a very interesting feature to um, examine the file system on the flash memory and if you need to know where a file is located well it's shown in the manager where it is located on the flash memory here but it also shows you um, where it is loaded into the memory of the computer itself so it loads from 801 to 5566 for uh, this file over here um, however the Casio Pay is more than just a device for loading games and programs it can also control hardware you can um, 
You can drive motors with it. You can control your home lights with it. You can play. Ah, you can do it through the user port. But well, the, the Casio Pay has an I uh, I square C functional <coughs> function, and I square C is used a lot um, in um, in uh, electronic circuits, in television, and other other app uh, devices. So if you know how to connect those ICs to your Casio Pay, you can control it. Well, ah, ah, that brings us to the second part of the demonstration. <laughs> The Casio Pay has an expansion connector on the back. Yeah, let me get a close up of this, even though it's very dark in here. Yeah. Okay, yes, I see it now. Okay, yeah, okay. And that expansion connector allows you to add um, various devices, and that's exactly where the wedge comes in. Because if you are an assembly programmer, well, there are instructions in the manual how to control those functions. But if you are a basic programmer, then you need a wedge. So we go into the menu, because the wedge is integrated into the menu. So if you load your program you've written yourself, that's using the wedge, and you lose it, you load it through the menu, you are automatically loading the wedge, so your program can use that extra functionality. Uh, what, are the, what are the functions of the wedge again? Built into the switch? I'm going to show you. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, look at that. Oh, wow. okay. How did you get the wedge again? How do you uh, You can activate the wedge by loading the menu and uh, pressing uh, F7. It ex escapes to the uh, the wedge directly, but um, it remains in memory. So if you load a basic program, the wedge is still um, available to you. You only need to activate it. Well, this is the extra functionality that the wedge. What key did you push there to show that? Oh, uh, well, I typed uh, help explanation mark help. Oh, okay, yeah, there it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, we can uh, have um, two analog inputs on the Casio Pay. So you can connect uh, uh, two potentiometers. It, it can uh, generate uh, DTMF tones, the dialing tones uh, on, uh, on telephones. <laughs> it's, it's just a gimmick, it's, it's not really useful. Uh, the things that are uh, useful are the I square uh, C commands. You can um, well uh, read to an address, write to an address, uh, get data, uh, get the last data, and uh, put data. And of course, you can stop. And um, there's also a uh, um, 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 uh, click on, click out functionality. Click on, click out is an, uh, a system to control your home lights. It's, uh, it's called click on, click out because it's called switch on, switch off in English. And well, you can use it for the uh, old system. You can use it for the new system. I can show it to you, it's uh, below the desk here. Um, it also has a built-in speech synthesizer, which allows you to speak some text. It uh, has a sample playback functionality, so you can play back samples. Samples stored on the 8 megabyte flash memory. Um, you can control servos, and um, well, you can um, generate uh, sine waves. So uh, the samples, um, their wave files, and what are the locations of the wave files that you can play through? Uh, the wave files are um, eight kilohertz, okay, four yes. bits. Four bits because the C64 uh, allows you to play four bits levels. It can go higher, but then you need to do some tricks. Um, you um, can also use the, um, the um, digital output, PBM, and then you can connect real speakers, and then you have 8-bit sound, which is very convenient for a pet system, because a pet system, <laughs> if you want to play samples, then you don't have a SID chip, and you don't have an audio card, so you can play samples. Yeah. 
the, the samples are stored in the Casio Pay. They will never reach the pad itself, but the pad controls the playback of the samples. Which brings us to the um, following um, demonstration. Down the mic. Machine. Very yellow, how, okay. how can that play samples? <laughs> it's indeed very, very yellow. <laughs> it's only 4K. <laughs> it's like impossible. It won't last long. Um, well, this is one of my private Casio Pay models. The uh, normal Casio Pay comes in a case. So, is that a, a prototype that you're holding there? Um, it's actually a production type without a case. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, might as well look at it without a case. Mm -hmm. There it is, without a case. Okay. And... What's it on? Oh. Hey, suddenly my screen is color. <laughs> I think the problem lies within my 64 uh, then. <laughs> and not within the monitor. Right. And the cable. Okay, we press the look. There's the menu. Oh, these are the games we have. You see the menu looks exactly like it does on the 64. Yes. It behaves exactly like it does on the 64. And it will look the relatively the same on the pet? Yes, it does. I can show you later. Um, well, uh, we want to go to the uh, uh, sample player program. And okay. Well, there are five uh, samples we can uh, play. Over the monitor, it will sound like 4 bit, 8 kilohertz. Right. If we connect speakers, it will sound much clearer. Yes. Of course. So this is uh, oh, music number one. It sounds it sounds exactly like you would expect from a four bit signal. And of course, you can stop it and you can uh, well go for the. That uh, is quite amazing. I am impressed. Yes. Thank you. Yes, yes, let it go. And if we connect, well, this is a small uh, development board that only uses the um, the digital output and adds some filtering. Okay. But you can connect it to some speakers. There's speakers connected. And speakers connected, it sounds, uh, and well, well, that one a little bit nice. And it sounds a little bit better. Um, uh, well, uh, 8 megabytes, <laughs> because the yeah. Casio Pay has a flash memory of 8 megabytes, so your sample can be 8 megabytes. Mine is a small portion for the program that controls and it. The was a wave, yes? And the sample is a wave, yes. And um, all you need to do is make a wave file, mono wave file. 8 kilohertz, 8 bits, and then well, you can edit just like uh, using the add file function. You go to the add file function and, and um, 
Um, okay. It's not connected. <laughs> it's <laughs> Now, uh, when you connect it to the Casio Pay, do you have to turn everything off before you connect the uh, USB cable, or you can um, hot connect? Uh, you can you can hot connect it. Oh wow! There you go. Hot connect. So these are the, uh, the, the these are the samples that are uh, added. and they are indicated as audio files. So I could like take Star Trek music sample at eight kilohertz. Um. Yeah. Yes. You, yes. You downgrade it to eight kilohertz. Save it as a wave. Yes. And play it back to your phone. And then you can well uh, put the file selector on wave audio. Yes. And then you add your file. Well, there are no waves uh, in, in, on my PC at this moment, but they're all already on the Casio Pay. So you can um, have um, well, quite a few minutes of sound. <laughs> um, oh, oh, sorry. Cancel. Sorry. Because there's nothing to nothing to add. Uh, also, the eight megabytes is uh, uh, almost completely full. Oh, there are okay. only 24 blocks left of the eight megabytes. Okay. And um, well, that is for. Uh, playing back samples. Yes. Uh, watch functionality is only available on the C64 and on the uh, Pet 3000 series. Uh, yes. This model. Uh, so not for the 4000 series or 8000 series. I haven't written the watch for those series yet, but technically it's not impossible. Okay. And um, uh, the functionality is still there. Only the watch allows you to. Access it, access it more easily. Well, I've never understood the difference between a three, a three thousand thirty-two and a four thousand thirty-two. So. Um, it's true. It's true. <laughs> well, um, uh, it's uh, basic two or basic four. Oh, I see. That's it. That's that. That's it. That's it.